Here we are, Sugar Clouds. Jawbreaker, Sugar Clouds. Jugger, uh, Jawbreakers, uh, Sugar Clouds, and a little bit of monologue. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the first piece of writing I did for Ride the Cyclone. Um, I, yeah, I think this is actually just the first thing um, I wrote in it. Because uh, I was like, and I think uh, way back when I opened with this monologue, and a friend called me. Uh, and I was like busy writing at home and, and they said, are you really going to open with that monologue? <laughs> like, it doesn't feel like there's any, it feels like an ending. It doesn't feel like mm. a, a beginning. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then, um, yeah. Um, and then kind of with Brooke and I, um, of course we had a crazy version of it where a teddy bear came out and started surfing. That's uh, right. Back in the oh day. Gosh. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause, and um, yeah, it was like an Elvis beach party kind of thing. Um, but rightfully kind of, then I kind of think we came to our senses and went, wow, that really does undercut the emotion in it. It's fun, but it was just really took the sails out of um, uh, the emotion of it, right? Uh, but then the funny thing is the singer at the time, a great, uh, great Kelly uh, Hudson was like, how am I gonna do this song without that Elvis beach party in the middle? And I was like, um, I guarantee you, if I would have added that, you would have killed me, right? You know, it's funny how an actor gets used to something that is totally absurd, right? Well, that but, was back, that was earlier days too, because I think at that point, isn't that when we we tried to get two people in the cast to learn trombones in two weeks to just yeah. do bump things? Isn't that, yeah. that's, that's this, yeah. And they hated us. Oh, I mean, mostly yeah. when you get um, an actor to play an instrument they've never played before in their life and tell them in two weeks they're going to play it on stage. Um, they're not going to like you a lot, right? <laughs> this, is, this is before we were dealing with act actors' equity, so we're... The actors' equity and everything. But yeah, yeah, exactly. So you can make them do those kind of things. But, but, they, did. but well, they, they did. Well, they did. They did a great job. They will uh, be upset if you say, hey, by the way, you've got two weeks to learn the trombone. Go. Right? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. No pressure. Uh, yeah, it's a super fun thing. I mean, I think that uh, the one of the bits that we kept all the way throughout is the recorder solo. Uh, yeah. which I love. Yeah, right. it's you give me mad props to that instrument. Doesn't get enough love. I used to be an elementary school music teacher for about 10 yeah. years, and I taught grade three and four recorder. So it was just a natural extension mm -hmm. of my day job, basically. Yeah, and worlds I think together. I think it is one of, I, I, I think we actually have two recorder solos in this album. So it's like, it's amazing. Yeah. Right? I'm not sure if there's a category for that in the Grammys. Yeah, but, uh, oh, we should totally solos. be. Yeah, or yeah, yeah recorder players of the world unite yeah <laughs> anyways this is an it's a funny one too because like you said jacob that your mon that monologue you'd written very early on i think we fleshed out a, a rough version of the song that we used for quite a few years and i yeah. think this, they were they were circ uh, in the rewrites this was being circled around like are we going to keep this some people really connected with it and some people really didn't and gosh everybody's everybody's got their own own opinions on things uh but in yeah. the last last little while we really tightened it up um i think the arrangement on the album really for me just puts it over it's a super fun high yeah. energy and it sort of matches the the sentiment of um of constance's sort of cathartic moment yeah right? just i mean I, I think the biggest thing also with brooklyn is, is we wanted to kind of write a show about death which basically it is it's about you know it's about loss and early loss but not to have the audience feel um because i think that i mean personally for me um I can get there by myself without like, you know, in terms of something being a super bummer. Right. You know what I mean? I don't need a work of art to, uh, to uh, make me feel uh, heavier about that issue. Right. You know what I mean? So we really wanted to um, find a way to, to explore the idea of loss or senseless tragedy, or like all of a sudden you read about kind of, I don't know, somebody, you know, a whole town's wiped out by an earthquake or whatever. Right. You can't even wrap your head around it, but to have a way, way, way to actually, um access that i mean so even constance who kind of is the only one who's kind of somewhat content in her life even though i mean she was sad and full of self-loathing but there was but her revelation at the top of the roller coaster is that you know um there was a lot of great things that happened too right mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so yeah we i think that the whole goal with brooke and i was not to is to actually energize the audience not to kind of pull them into the kind of because i think and i mean i think most of us as human beings we all know loss right and 
you can you can take somebody to the basement pretty quick with those things but that's not that was never what we set out to write about like no. we didn't want it to feel um like like even like we, we just didn't want you to feel like you wanted to throw up afterwards right yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah, a celebra- yeah a celebration of life is i mean yeah it's cheesy yeah but. we didn't want it to be a wrist litter basically right you know what I mean? yeah. um, and, it, and with a theme like this like i mean of course like six uh dead young people of course i mean that's it's inherently sad but but um but actually that's not what we wanted to express with it we also wanted to show you these funny hysterical full of life energetic yeah. You know, yeah. kids who are just kind of aren't broken or kind of you know what i mean because i think that that was you know, something certainly something we talk about in the show later on is the idea of that sometimes we frame the last moment of someone's life as their entire life right you know what i mean and go oh and they you know um they you know why did it have to be this way or especially when it comes to something that is like an unnatural um demise right you know we talk about the car crash all the way through the person's funeral but you kind of go but no actually what about all that other stuff right you know Mm -hmm. you know like that was just five minutes of their life right yeah and i think i think that angle also gave us a fair bit of freedom for the um like the changing the musical styles to sort of represent the characters and to try and express as a broader range of of characters as we were we were yeah in the fairground also kind of kind of naturally came out of that because when you do walk around a fairground you're always like it's amazing how many genres and how many uh, even centuries of music you're actually hearing at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're hearing the Calliope on the um, in and the uh, merry-go-round, right? And you're hearing, you know, kind of rap music like playing like you know on the zipper and kind of and then you got that whatever that crazy one that spins around and kind of like, you know they're playing um, metal music and so you just you're hearing it all simultaneously and that's kind of the thrill of a fairground which also is a thrill of the individuality of all these these kids we specifically said that uh you know and and if anything sometimes people detractors have said oh like none of these songs sound like they came from the same head right and you're going to go that's specifically what we were kind of going for Mm -hmm. right and that every kid has their own genre we don't yeah. double up. I don't think that there's any song in the show that where the kids' song is the same genre as the last kids, right? No, exactly. Yeah, and it's funny that that I think that will age hopefully age well for us in the, terms of things have really shifted in the last ten years, and we do have access to like we say, hey, Edith Piaf, you don't know who that is? Go Google that, and then yeah. go check out Tom Waits, and go check out David Bowie, and go check out and yeah, 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 go I, check I, out I, you know whatever. Totally. Like, I mean, I find even that kind of that obstinate, obstinate kind of, what the heck, what's that? Like nowadays you have access to all of it, right? You yeah. I mean? so it's, yeah. It is pretty amazing on that front. I mean, cause Brooke and I kind of, cause we're old, old dudes, uh, grew up pre-internet. And so you actually had to go and buy the things that, uh, a record store. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and so, the miracle of an iPod shuffle. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, right? yeah, or your Walkman and your tapes and everything like that. Yeah. But, but so yeah, I guess when we were younger, you had to actually, you had to be very careful what genre you committed yourself to because it actually cost you tons of money to buy the album and kind of go, okay, I'm committing to building a library of this kind of music. Yeah. But now you get it all for free. So it's awesome. Well, no, I, and actually, sorry, <laughs> just, back, back on the iPod shuffle thing, that for me yeah. and my personal tastes, I think that does sort of reflect what we're interested in because I'd love to listen to my iPod has got, I'm going to listen to Sonny Rollins and I'm going to listen to a Bowie track and then Radiohead's going to come up and then there's going to be yeah. some Klezmer and there's going to be some world music and there's going to be some David Byrne and there's going to be some, yeah. the cars or, or, or the Beatles or whatever it is. It's just this, this world we live in currently that where we have access to all these different things and sort of yeah. being able to follow our passions to actually learn a bit more about those things. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I wonder about like kind of also, cause I, I feel that there's less of that. Cause I mean, I feel when I grew up, it was also, I'm into metal. I'm yeah. into I'm into goth music. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I, I felt that you really, as a team, were really identified with what genre of music you listen to. Yeah. Whereas I feel like that's like, maybe I'm wrong, but it feels like it's less of a thing now, right? You I, think I, mean? so. yeah. mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it explains our show a little bit better. Anyways. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. There you are, Sugar Clouds. Sugar Clouds. Enjoy. Garage bandy fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm.